This is video number 565. Vultures, performer artists, funerals and kabot. So I had this beautiful blessing and opportunity to say goodbye to my granny two weeks ago. She departed from the African red soil to the streets where they have golden paving. The last seven years of her life was truly, she was a prisoner of her ill health. Even though I will miss her dearly, I'm so happy for her that she obtained liberty and freedom from her body. It was truly an interesting journey, the goodbye journey. I also knew that this writing was inevitable, but I had a bit of a writer's block, means now it feels right to write about it. I'm grateful to God who has given me quite a few angels and cheerleaders on my journey while my granny still had his air in her lungs. Due to the circumstances of her ill health, she was a difficult person. She had her moments where she was a delight to be around with, but as her health deteriorated, the moments of happiness and bliss also decreased. With my personality on the Enneagram board, I am a seven. And we sevens just like to have fun. So the more she became bitter, the less my visits became. I have my angels reprimanding me and also encouraging me to visit her even more. My one wise friend, the lady, I said, One day your granny will not be here anymore and then you will have regrets if you don't make time to visit her. So my lady and myself started this game. Every time I visited my granny, I will take a selfie to show her that I did listen to her advice. Today I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I made the effort. I'm grateful for people like my lady that encourages me to visit her because today I really live with no regrets towards my granny. Afterwards, we both realized that our two grannies, as her advice was paid forward, as, as someone years ago reprimanded her about her granny to also visit her more, that our grannies passed away on the exact same day. Hers left this world three years ago, but on the exact same date. Isn't God just too amazing and his timing is perfect? Malaria also attended the funeral. She and Tanya gave me a beautiful pink gift. I love pink, filled with hug and a mug, a sponge wash to wash away my tears and my sadness and a big box of Astros to allow the colourful life to enter my life again. And the crowd goes, oh, my you to have people that surround you with so much love. I'm currently working through Proverbs on a treasure hunt for more wisdom. This is what they've made me think of, Proverbs 3 verse 16, you will have beauty and blessing surrounding you. You will, you will be inside a bubble of blessings. This is what these two friends manifested in my life. Tuesday, the day after the funeral, I heard the song, In the Living Years. I could listen to the song with literally not having any regrets. In my granny's living years, I said all that I had to say. I wrote a letter reinforcing what she means to me. I celebrated her while she was still there. My dad made a bookmark for her, also celebrating her life, his way of an eology. We celebrated her. This made me think, people that only write about their loss and shock when someone passes away in the funeral letter, is it a reflection of regret? versus how people really celebrate someone's life in their last letters. Is a funeral letter note a reflection of your own condition of your heart? Then we need to talk about the vultures, the people that tries to steal all the shine and sympathy on funerals. I've seen that when somebody was really loved, the levels of vultures decrease. They celebrate the memories instead of grasping on material goods. Just to have one last grasp on that person. I've seen people that demand to sit in front rows. I have seen people rushing to grasp the first flower petals as a show that they were the closest to the deceased to make almost a performing art at showing their last respects versus the one that deserved the front seat 
gently sitting in a different row, patiently waiting their turn to say goodbye by dropping rose petals on the casket. I have seen holy sacred